Hello UT and hello the world, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas. We have a mammoth show today because we're talking about old bones. I've always been fascinated with prehistoric creatures and I'm all about fossils, from tail to tusk. And I know something about a classic tusk. Come on, baby, could you ever be? However, someone's been saying that's my favorite Fleetwood Mac album, uh, which I can assure you is only rumors. It seems I'm not the only one with a fascination in fossils. Because back in 1935, Uncle Sam got America back on top by digging down. And through the Works Progress Administration, created tons of jobs for people collecting fossils all across the USA, including Texas. Then before you could say, eat lead Nazis, World War II broke out and the jackets were all but forgotten. That is, until now. The fine folks at the Vertebrate Paleontology Lab here at UT have been opening these jackets, which is like unlocking a time machine back to the 30s inside another time machine back to the Cretaceous. A sort of time duckin', if you will. And we got to talk with Chris Sagabeel, the collections manager of the lab, to tell us more. So, first of all, what's the history of this WPA collection? When we fell on hard times, the Works Progress Administration started to collect fossils across the state. And the primary collection came to the University of Texas. The idea was then that they would be studied and, and form the foundation of a big, big sort of research effort. But then World War II started, and that sort of put an end to this whole WPA project as men were needed, obviously, to, to fight the war. The fossils that were collected in that effort in the late 30s, early 40s, essentially got stored at UT waiting for someone to come and study them. And some of them are, are still waiting for the right person to come with a research interest and open up some of these um, plaster jackets that have who knows what inside them. And what kind of fossil treasures, or as some Texans call them, pre-oil, have been discovered? We had a graduate student just a couple of years ago who described a number of different new species of animals, um, learned more about animals that we thought we knew something about. We found bits of animals that had never been seen before, all from jackets that have been already in our collection for 70, 80 years. Now, I'm sure the collection can't be that large. So uh, how many specimens do you have in this trove? Um, our estimates are somewhere in the neighborhood of, of one to two million. That's amazing! I don't even know where that water came from. This is a candle! So what are the goals for these jackets and what can they tell us about Texas? We have people who are purely interested in the biology. They want to know what kind of sounds and behaviors that dinosaurs had. So they're looking at the detailed anatomy of, of some of the fossils we have to answer biological questions. And um, a lot of the people who work on these fossils are, are interested in, in sort of the evolutionary history, um, using these fossils as bits of evidence to, to put the big tree of life together. We also got to chat with some of the students working on these WPA jackets for their research, such as Joshua Lively. So how did you get involved with these WPA specimens? I have uh, traditionally worked on fossils in deep time, specifically ones from the Cretaceous period, uh, especially those around 75 million years ago. And uh, here in Texas, we have a great collection of fossils from that age, uh, roughly from the, what's called the late Cretaceous period. And so uh, very early on when I got to Texas, I started uh, working out here at the collections just looking for projects. What do we yeah, have that could uh, potentially be discovered here? Uh, we have uh, you know, one of the largest collections in North America, so there are uh, countless opportunities for projects here. What can these jackets in the collection tell us about Texas history? With a lot of these uh, fossils that we're working on, specifically with the WPA Mosasaur project, uh, these are animals uh, from a time period that we really don't have samples of from anywhere else in North America. Uh, and uh, the few pieces that we have are, you know, very uh, small collections, uh, very fragmentary. So this is really going to enhance our understanding of uh, the ecosystem at that time uh, in Earth's history. We also met with Blake Chapman, an undergraduate student working with a specific mosasaur fossil from a WPA jacket. So what have you discovered thanks to this UT collection? Well, specifically, there's been a few specimens of mosasaurs that have shown up from this site, including um, a Tylosaurus and what seems to be a new species. I do have the maxilla right here. You could see some of the teeth are preserved here. There's a few that are damaged or knocked off. We still have them. Then there's a couple ribs here. So what future work has to be done on your project? Well, right now, a lot of the work that needs to be done is uh, preparatory. And once that's done, I'll need to go through the scientific literature even further than I have already, just to make sure that it is a new species. But I'm hoping to have a paper published by the time I graduate with my 
Bachelor of Science. Very fascinating stuff and an awesome insight into the fossil relics that were right under our noses. My thanks to Chris, Joshua, and Blake for sharing their knowledge with us. I haven't seen this many old fossils since I stopped in a Luby's on Sunday to write an apology for making ageist jokes. Hey, if you like this video, please share it with your friends, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, at Mr. Andrew Rosas, and follow the Texas X's as well. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas, reminding you to stay hooked.